Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Harnessing the Power of People Through Effective Meeting Facilitation. My name is Pete Duffy, and today we're going to talk about the foundational building block of affecting great meetings, and that is high-level thinking. So to get things started, I'm going to share five common meeting scenarios right, that result from poor high-level thinking. So to set the stage, I'm going to be a meeting attendee, and all of you who are out there watching me are going to be my teammates. We're all attending the same meeting. The meeting scenarios take place from before the meeting starts through after the meeting ends. Right? The meeting is today, and Tom is our leader. Five scenarios. Number one. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, oh, yeah, I had a great night last night. It was awesome. Yeah. So, hey, I was just wondering, um, did you guys get an agenda? Oh, you did? When did Tom send it out? Oh, 9.30. Oh, man. You know, I was out till 10 o'clock celebrating, and, you know, I, it totally skipped my mind to check my email. So I don't have one. Hey, we got 10 minutes till the meeting starts. Can I get a copy of that real quick? Oh, thanks. Number two. So like, I'm coming out of a conference call yesterday about four o'clock, <clears throat> Tom comes to me and he says, hey, you know, I'm running a meeting tomorrow. And I said, oh, oh yeah, right. I'm looking forward to that. And he said, hey, listen, I need your help with something. I said, what is it? He said, well, there's a topic on there about um, how to handle a difficult client call. And um, I wonder if you could run the workshop. And I said, well, um, I really haven't any time to prepare for that, Tom. He said, oh, that's OK. You'll be fine. Just, just run it kind of as a high level discussion. You can get it done. Well, I'll tell you, I'm, just, I'm not very confident. I'm, it's very uncomfortable for me to do something like this. Number three, so the meeting agenda says this topic was only supposed to last 15 minutes and it's been over an hour and we're going to be way behind schedule and I have a feeling that instead of having a free lunch or open lunch, we're going to have to have a working lunch and stupidly I scheduled a client call at 1215 and now I'm going to probably have to tell the person that I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it. And, oh, this is just so frustrating when the, when the agenda changes. Number four. So, like, before the meeting started, I had three huge cups of coffee. And we've been at this meeting for two hours. And I am going to burst. I just got to go. And... The, the break, the next break, looks like it's, oh, oh my gosh, it's not till noon time. Oh, I got to tell my boss I need a break. Number five, on the way home. Oh, that meeting was such a total waste of time. Tell me, all I did over four hours, we'll listen to Tom and the head of client services talk, you know, I took notes, you know, we, Easily could have done that over a conference call. Some things could have even been done over email. Now at this rate, it's five o'clock. I'm not gonna be home till seven. I was supposed to take my family out to dinner tonight. It's crazy. Well, I'm sure those of you who are watching this, probably maybe some of you are shaking your head saying, been there, done that. We've all been part of those kinds of meetings. You know, across my career, I have facilitated and participated in hundreds and hundreds of meetings with very large organizations like Pfizer or Interpublic Group and all the way down to small organizations such as HMIS or National Catholic Regional Junior High School and everything in between. And the one thing that I have learned and noticed is that investing in high-level thinking is the exception to the rule. It means that for people who actually want to do it and do it well, there's a tremendous opportunity to make a difference for yourself and for the people that you lead.
So let's talk about the four focus areas of high-level thinking. Those are clarity of purpose, meeting planning time, planning environment, and how much time should actually take to actually have the meeting. So first off is clarity of purpose. And this is the preeminent thing that every leader, every meeting facilitator must pay attention to. And we get to clarity of purpose by asking ourselves the question, what exactly do I need to achieve as a result of holding this get together? For instance, if you've noticed that your team is not very effective at handling difficult client calls, a very good purpose is to actually have a get together with the purpose being to help them to be more confident, more skilled in being able to do it. And that lathers all the way up to having great client satisfaction, which is one of your goals. Okay. But the question is, does every purpose require a meeting? And that's based on how we actually define a meeting. Across my career, and having facilitated many meetings, I'm a big believer in the idea that a meeting is more of what I call an energy hub. And there are many energy hubs on the way to achieving our goals. Now, every meeting has key attributes. For me, there are three. The first and most important attribute is collaboration. It means that inherent to the energy hub is a need for people to come to do things like brainstorm, problem solve, skill build, motivate, reward, and other actions. It's where you really tap into people's minds to get buy-in into what you're trying to do. The second key attribute of the energy hub is around taking action. And this is very, very important. When people come to a meeting and they don't take action, it's really not an effective meeting. So for instance, if you are doing that skill building exercise around greater confidence in taking difficult calls, then an excellent action from that is for your people to send you any success stories that week right, that helped you to know that they were actually getting better at that skill. And finally, it should align with your goal. As I shared in the prior example, right, if you have a goal of 99.9% .9 client satisfaction, then it makes total sense to have a purpose and a meeting that helps people become more confident and more skilled. So now, this meeting resource analysis tool is something that I have built over my career to help me really think about these questions. So, is there a need for collaboration? Yes or no? Is there a need or is it aligned with my goals? Yes or no? Is there going to be attendee action? If we say yes to all of these things, it makes sense to make the investment in having a very good meeting. Now, if we say no to these things, maybe it doesn't make sense to have a meeting. Maybe we can do things in a different way, such as a reporting process over email or some conference calls, things like that. The other benefit of this meeting resource analysis tool is that it actually helps you to think through high level things that will impact your agenda strategy. We talked about collaboration, talked about goal alignment, we talked about attendee action. All those things help you to start to percolate your thoughts about the agenda. So the second pillar of high level thinking is what I call meeting planning and time investment. Now, the last time we were together, I shared the name of a person that made a big difference in my career, and that his name was Frank. And one of the big things that Frank taught me 
was that the more time you invest in your people and you invest in the planning for those people, the greater the return on investment. So my rule of thumb has always been over my career that it's one P for one M. So it means that's one hour planning for every hour of meeting. It seems like it's a lot, but it's really not. And when you start thinking through and you get into the agenda and you think about some of the other things we're talking about here today, you'll understand why an hour may not even be enough time to do your planning. The next pillar of high-level thinking is called planning environment. Now, I want to ask you all a question. How many of you have actually either professionally been up against a deadline or personally, perhaps you're looking to book a trip, right? And these are very, very important things. And somebody comes up to you, maybe one a member of your team, and says to you, hey, uh, can I pick your brain about something, boss? And, you know, this deadline is acute. I've got to get it done, right? So you say, it's not really a good time. Can we pick another time? The same thing if it's at home. You say to your children, um, look, it, I can't talk now. I'm just about to book this. I'll, we'll talk in like 15 minutes, all right? So you need to have the same kind of got to get it done attitude around this idea of planning and your environment. So there are really three core pieces around this. One is that if you're going to effectively plan, your environment needs to be free from distraction. Second is you really need to think about what time of day do I actually do my best thinking? For me, it's the morning. And I like to go out into nature, maybe the beach, wherever else. Third, very important, is block your schedule. Outlook calendar, out of office, busy, do not disturb, whatever it is, right? Make the investment. When you do these kinds of things, right, around planning environment, it shows that you really value yourself and you value others. And when people come to your meetings and you've done this, they know, they can tell that you actually took a little bit of time to think more about this, the, the meeting planning. And the last piece that I get asked very often is how long should the meeting be? Well, that really depends on the purpose of the meeting and the scope, right? But really, the rule of thumb is you want to try to keep it to as minimum as possible to get the most or the maximum out of it. For standard meetings, weekly team meetings, etc., it's really 30 to 60 minutes. And if you plan it well, you should be able to get a lot out of that time. The other constraint that we have that really limits the amount of time you can, you can use is around, especially from a corporate level, is the scarcity of conference rooms. Everybody's always fighting over those things, right? So that can impact as well, you know, how long you actually take to do your meeting and try to get the most out of it as you can. So, let's talk about what we accomplished today. The first thing, and most important, is we talked about investing in high-level thinking. Really taking the time to commit to doing this, because it really pays off. We talked about really the four pillars around it. First, is being crystal clear of your purpose and understanding does my purpose require that I have a meeting or not? And think about those three things that we talked about. Right? Is it around collaboration? Does it align with my goal? And especially, finally, will people take action as a result of what we've done? Planning time, making the investment, planning environment, and understanding the meeting length. Now, before we end, I want to share with you one quote that has to do with the importance of thinking. And this quote is from Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein said, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. 
And I would like to adapt this to what we're talking about today. Is the meeting place, as we have created it, is a process of our thinking. And it cannot be changed without changing our thinking. So I want to thank you for joining us today for harnessing the power of people, talking about high-level thinking. And I would like you to join me next week as we talk about part two, the art of agenda creation. Thank you again for joining me today, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Have a great day.